Well, good morning. As I mentioned, it's fantastic to be, be seen and not viewed. And I would be remiss if I did not start out by saying uh, thank you to the community. Uh, I've received thousands of uh, emails, texts, calls, uh, food delivered to the office, food deliver delivered to my home, and uh, the words of encouragement, the words of care have been overwhelming. Uh, my staff here, uh, my, my staff here has been awesome. They've delivered food to my home. Uh, they've offered to cut my grass. <laughs> they've offered to do everything for me that I couldn't uh, during this time. And uh, I, I've just been touched by the outpouring of support and prayers. Um, while I was sick in bed, I had someone actually send me a, a link, or not a link, but a video of an entire church praying for me last Sunday. So uh, it's been overwhelming, and uh, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Dr. Rambapal and his excellent, excellent staff. Uh, Midway Medical Specialty Group were awesome during this entire time, during my, my uh, experience with COVID. And uh, I just know I had a lot of people rooting for me, supporting me, and I had a great medical team. And uh, I feel very blessed to be here with everyone. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I experienced because that's what everybody wants to know. I'll tell you what I did to beat it, which everybody wants to know. This might not work for everybody, but it worked for me. And um, one thing that I've learned in talking to people is the symptoms are different for everybody and the cure is different for everybody. But I'm going to tell you what I experienced and what worked for me. And um, I went to the uh, Bonita Springs area on July 24th, that was a Friday, to uh, start meetings associated with the Florida Sheriff's Risk Management Fund. I'm the actual chairman of that fund. We started Friday afternoon, uh, just a very small meeting with myself, the executive director, and one other sheriff. We practiced social distancing. Uh, we covered a lot of business that Friday afternoon. Friday evening, we met with the entire board. We practiced social distancing uh, during that meeting. And then Saturday was our actual board meeting, Saturday and Sunday. We concluded those meetings on Sunday and immediately morphed uh, or transitioned into the Florida Sheriff's Association Conference, which started with our board meeting on Sunday afternoon. Uh, Sunday afternoon, uh, we all practice social distancing. I could tell you that wearing a mask when you're in a meeting such as that is somewhat challenging. And the reason why is, uh, even though we all tried to wear a mask, if we were, if we were conversing and, 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 uh, and, and talking about something that uh, we all had an interest in, normally we, we would remove our masks so that everyone can hear and see facial expressions. So uh, I know a lot of people say, well, did you wear your mask 100% of the time? No, but I can say we wore it probably 80% of the time. Uh, there were times that you just had to take it off so that you could uh, express what you wanted to get out there and, and share with the other sheriffs. Uh, we had a board meeting on Monday all day in which the secretary of the Florida Department of Corrections came with his assistant, and he shared with the group that uh, he had spent the weekend at Columbia uh, Correctional Institute, uh, Department of Corrections prison, which was full of COVID. He said he visited that to see what better his staff could do to address it. He addressed all of the sheriffs. Uh, he did not mingle with any of us. He spoke from the dais. And uh, we hear shortly after he left us that he became ill, and so did his assistant. So that was Monday. What, the 21st? No, that would have been the 24th, 25th, 20th. that would have been the 27th. Okay. July 27th, that was a Monday. He's talked to us in the morning and then he left. Um, my Which sheriff was that again, I'm sorry? No, he was the secretary for the Florida Department of Corrections and his name is Inch, I-N-C-H. On Tuesday morning, my, uh, my group had to give a presentation and my vice chair did not show up for that presentation. So I actually had to do his presentation. 
Uh, my vice chair is Sheriff Mark Hunter from Columbia County. And I asked where, where he was. No one knew where he was. It wasn't until Wednesday that the Florida Sheriff's Association shared, Wednesday night or maybe even Thursday, that they shared that Sheriff Hunter had left the conference ill and that the Secretary Inch from the Florida Department of Corrections had left the conference ill and went home and tested positive. So immediately I knew that I was exposed to COVID, but I never did I think I might get the symptoms or have it. So I drove home Tuesday afternoon. It's about a three and a half hour drive. I, I arrived home Tuesday evening uh, with uh, a lot of body aches that I contributed to the drive. Uh, Wednesday, I continued with body aches. And then Wednesday afternoon, I was hit with an unbelievable headache, something that like I've never experienced in my life. It was, uh, it was intense pain. Uh, I actually went in my medicine cabinet, took three Advil, uh, which I never take. And um, I just hung around the house Wednesday afternoon. I progressively got worse with body aches Wednesday evening to the point that it almost felt like uh, someone had beat me with a baseball bat from my neck all the way to my feet. Uh, on Thursday, uh, I got up and had spiked a fever of 102 on Thursday morning. And I immediately called the office and said, listen, uh, I, I need to go ahead and get set with a doctor uh, that specializes in this. And because I was exposed while I was working, I knew it would have to follow the workers' comp channel uh, that we use here at the office. And Dr. Rambopal is who we use for that. So uh, Thursday, I was very ill. I uh, broke my fever Thursday and uh, got tested Friday morning. That would have been one week after I went to the conference. This was July 31st. One week later, I got tested, and uh, they called me Friday evening, and I had tested positive. So you got tested on the 31st of July? One week after being at the conference. That's not one week after I was exposed, but one week after I was at the conference. You're confident that, that the conference is where you got it? No doubt in my mind. No doubt. So uh, July 31st, uh, they called me, gave me the, uh, that I was positive. And uh, then they, uh, I said, well, what should I do? And uh, the doctor said, I want you to treat it as a uh, bad cold. And if things uh, worsen to involve your lungs, uh, go ahead and call him back. So uh, that was Friday night. Saturday, I started on a treatment, which I'm going to give you uh, the doses and everything. I started on a treatment of high doses of vitamin C, uh, also zinc. And uh, every morning, I got up and I drank uh, Natalie's orange juice with uh, 30 milligrams of zinc. All during the day, uh, I would drink Gatorade mixed with powder vitamin C. In the evening, I would also uh, take another zinc pill, and I would also take a baby aspirin in the evening. And then, uh, of course, everyone says, well, why do you take a baby aspirin? But uh, I know from all the research that I had done is when it gets in the lungs, it tends to coagulate the blood in the lungs. And I thought if I can keep my blood thin and prevent coagulation, that's probably a good thing. So I did a baby aspirin in the evening, I think Saturday and Sunday. And then uh, a dear friend of mine, uh, who's a pharmacist, called me and said, listen, I think you need to get on quinine. And uh, I said, quinine? I said, my mother used to take that many, many years ago for cramps, but I really never thought much about it. And uh, she said, listen, she said, quinine was used to treat malaria successfully. And if you look up malaria and see all the symptoms, they are very, very similar to COVID. Totally two different pathogens. Of course, malaria is from a, a mosquito. Uh, COVID is from a virus, but she insisted that quinine would be a very uh, good thing to start doing. So uh, on Monday, I actually started uh, tonic water with quinine in addition to Gatorade. And I doubled my baby aspirin from uh, not only in the evening, but I did it in the morning. So I did Natalie's orange juice in the morning, powdered and a baby aspirin, powdered vitamin C all day. Uh, a zinc again at night with a baby aspirin 
and then I started drinking tonic water with quinine as much as possible. I could tell you that week was probably the worst. That would have been my second week. The third of August beginning? Actually, that Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. Uh, but I continued to fight it, continued to fight it. And uh, people say, why'd you have to go to the hospital? It was just the congestion. I could not get rid of the congestion. Um, I think it was the fourth, we had our exit interview for accreditation and I couldn't actually talk on the phone that well with the group. Uh, but that was my worst day, Thursday the fourth. That seemed to, um, that seemed to be my turnaround where uh, I started to clear up that day on the fourth. Uh, the weekend of the 5th, 6th, and 7th, I, I started to do a little bit better. And uh, I got tested on the 10th, a Monday, and I continued to be positive on the 10th. Uh, so I, I felt somewhat discouraged, but at the same time, symptom-wise, I felt I was making progress. So uh, I continued my regimen uh, following uh, this uh, vitamin C guidelines. Some of the side effects of vitamin C are a lot of gastrointestinal uh, distress, and I, I was a little concerned because I was taking so much C, I was getting some of that, and I said, My, are those COVID symptoms or are those vitamin C symptoms? But I worked through all that. I worked through the entire week of uh, August 10th. I continued to improve symptom-wise, and then uh, I just got tested uh, this past Monday, which would have been August 17th. I tested negative, and our policy dictates that I have to have two negatives within 48 hours. I went back Wednesday. Uh, the doctor tested me again with a swab, and he said that he would like to go ahead and draw blood to check my antibodies. And so to your question over here, uh, the doctor called me Wednesday night and said, uh, your swab is negative still, which is great, and I have short-term and long-term antibodies already built up against the virus. So uh, as I look at this big picture, now I uh, have the antibodies that I could possibly share with someone who is very, very ill uh, to help them fight through a uh, convalescent plasma, plasma uh, transfer. And uh, they've already put me in touch with one blood. And uh, my next step is to uh, contact them, uh, make an appointment, and uh, let them draw some blood. And hopefully I can help someone else that is in much dire situation than I was. Uh, with COVID. And that's my story. I do have uh, my regimen of vitamin C for you to look at. I also uh, have here, after I finished all my uh, treatment, although I do continue to take uh, vitamin C at home, uh, there is actually a pill called uh, quercetin that actually incorporates vitamin C and zinc in it. So now instead of doing all this separately, there's something that you can buy over the counter that has all these uh, working together. So that's my story. Um, glad to be here. Glad to be back at work. And uh, again, I'd be remiss if I just didn't say I, I was truly, truly touched by the support and the love and the care that uh, this community and, and my employees shown me over the last, uh, it's been almost 28 days now. <clears throat> so do you feel back like 100%? Or? No, definitely not 100%. I still have a lot of congestion. I still get weak uh, pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, but uh, yesterday I came in the office for uh, like three hours, did a bunch of paperwork. Today I'm going to be here all day. Uh, at home I've been walking morning and night, and I actually started incorporating some wind sprints this week. And uh, I'll, I'll keep doing that and just keep building up my, my stamina and, and endurance. Yeah, but this is short turnaround time for, for this COVID. Well, th this, is, this is one thing I definitely want to tell everybody. Uh, everybody has a different reaction. I've talked to probably 150 people who have experienced COVID. Uh, their symptoms are different, their duration is different, their severity is different, and their treatment is different. Uh, this worked for me. I just wanted to share it with our community. Um, my symptoms are different than Sheriff Ch Chitwood's uh, symptoms in Volusia County. Uh, so uh, everybody gets a, a little different take on, on COVID. Uh, but this was what I experienced. But again, you, the two negative tests were on the 17th and the 19th of this week. Yep, mm -hmm. Monday and Wednesday, yeah. Okay. I came to work yesterday a, a little bit, and today I'm here all day. Did you always think 
you know, I mean, how did your perspective of COVID change pre having it and post having it? Was this as bad as you had heard it was and, and expected it would be? Was it worse? Well, first of all, I was always very cautious. I always wore my mask. I have a big thing of alcohol in my car. Uh, I thought that I was very, very cautious in preventing myself from getting COVID. Uh, once I got it, uh, the body aches were worse than anything I could have imagined. And then in my mind, I said, well, people end up in the hospital because it goes to their lungs and, and it affects their, uh, their breathing. And uh, that's how they end up on a ventilator. And I said, my God, the last thing I want this thing to do is go into my lungs. But when I had the body aches, it seemed to be centered around my rib cage. So I was a nervous wreck. Uh, especially that August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, I was a nervous wreck for around 72 hours. Uh, and then when the pain started to go away and my breathing seemed to be a little bit better, I, I said, well, I'm out of the woods. Uh, but the intense pain with the body aches was worse than I ever could imagine people would experience with it. How many people do you think you came in contact with after you started feeling symptoms, or were you pretty isolated once you felt well, sick? Well, here's the key. Once that I knew that my vice chair, that Sheriff Hunter from Columbia County, went home Monday night feeling ill, um, when I got home Tuesday, I did not go anywhere. I didn't come to work. I kind of stayed at home. And then Wednesday, when I started feeling symptoms, I said, I'm not, I'm going to just quarantine myself, not knowing, excuse me, <clears throat> not knowing uh, what's going on. And then when the email came out that there were two people at the conference that have now tested positive, I knew that most likely my symptoms were associated with COVID. Sure, when you were going through all that, were you nervous? Yeah, there was, there was a couple days that I was nervous. I said, you know, if this does end up in my lungs, I could be in real serious trouble here. So that was my greatest fear of it going into my lungs. Did, you, did, did anybody um, explain the medical science behind vitamin C? Did, did you remember anybody explaining how? Well, it's all, it's all written down here, but it was uh, highly recommended from other people who experienced COVID that vitamin C definitely, definitely helps. Usually when you, you know, when they say with the cold and stuff, by the time you show the symptoms, the vitamin C is kind of... Well, you need, stage. I think we have a copy of this. You need to read it because there's uh, how much to take during your initial onset, how much to take when the symptoms start to survive. And I kind of followed this to a T and it worked for me. Do you have any other um, health issues that might have put you into a higher risk? That, that's a great question. The, uh, the doctor was first to ask me about any other past medical history. I have none whatsoever. Did Dr. Ramkopal support you taking the zinc vitamin C uh, path? He asked me uh, uh, what I normally did for a cold, and I told him, and he said, yeah, you do that. And he knew you were kind of doing this higher dose mm -hmm. vitamin C stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you spell his, or Dr. Ram? His He'll have to get it for you. It's, uh, it's an awkward spelling. I think it's R-A-M-P-O-G-A-L, if, if I'm guessing right. Is that, the, is that the last name? Uh-huh. What's the first name? Modi. M-O-T-I. M-O-T-I. Modi, correct. He's an Indian physician, I believe. So who, who else is in your household, and how did you prepare for Well, I live with my 92-year-old dad, but I did not go there. I went to another home that we share, uh, and I there was no one else there, so I was by myself. Are you still taking... Now yeah, I, I still take vitamin C daily, I still take zinc daily, and I'm still drinking tonic water with quinine. No hydroxychloroquine? That, <laughs> uh, you know, if you want to talk about that, um, we discussed hydroxychloroquine. Right. Um, the doctor, and I didn't talk to this over, Dr. Rambapal was another physician that called me. I said, what do you think? And he said, we only prescribe that when people are in very, very serious condition. It's like on their deathbed or they're being put on a ventilator, we start prescribing that. He said the hydroxychloroquine, the quin is actually the quinine. So he said if you can, he confirmed, if you can get quinine going in you, uh, that, that is good without any side effects. The only side effects of uh, drinking a lot of tonic water is it does have a lot of sugar in it. So those of, those, those of people out there that maybe are diabetic, you definitely have to watch because it's a sugary drink. You know, that conference, of course, coming a lot of, under a lot of criticism as the, mm -hmm. the case counts. I think it's like over a dozen now. Well, now it's 14. I just brought the latest, so yeah. yeah. In hindsight, do you think that conference should have been held? Do you think, you know, top law enforcement officials should have been going to a gathering at that time? 
Well, I uh, actually wrote a, uh, I think it's that. honestly, I think that's me. I honestly wrote an email to our president, no, to our executive director uh, about 10 days before the conference because Lee County, that's where the conference was, was actually seeing a spike in COVID cases. And I said, what do you think? And he said, he assured me that uh, the hotel and the Sheriff's Association have taken the proper protocols to keep everybody safe. And I can tell you, once we got there, the hotel uh, had uh, masks for everyone coming in. They had uh, hand sanitizers. Social distancing was evident everywhere. And in our conferences, our first board meeting, I mean, we had a room that was probably uh, 3,000 square feet with 40 people in it. I mean, we were separated. So I felt somewhat comfortable uh, those first couple of days. In hindsight, or even oh yeah, in, in hindsight, yeah, my God, we sh we should not probably have had it. Any advice for people out there who are going to see our story today? Uh, this is what I did to make myself better. Uh, I I think masks are very important. I think uh, uh, washing your hands is very important. Social distancing is very important, um, and and we should can continue that until until we beat this virus. Don't hate yeah. me, but how old are you? I'm 62. Sheriff, were you afraid to sleep at night? How was your sleeping? Uh, my sleeping was a little erratic. I think uh, that August 4th, that was my bad day. That night, I slept like a baby. I remember I said, my God, I finally slept like all night. I didn't even really move much. And from that point on, my sleeping continued to improve. It might be your doctor. You to say, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of talk about uh, long-term complications. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm reading all about that now, and, and they tend to involve either um, neurological or cardiovascular uh, effects. And, you know, I just uh, hope and pray that uh, as I continue to get better, I, I have no long-term long, long -term effects from this. Did you experience the, uh, the loss of taste? I did for one day, just one day. And it was a day that my, my other symptoms were kind of, kind of really diminished. So I was like, oh, I can't taste something today. You know, it was like scared me again. What else is coming? But it only lasted for a day. That's the day to eat like all the Brussels sprouts and yeah, right. <laughs> all the stuff, all the healthy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, what kind of mask did you guys wear? I mean, was this is this is my mask I wear. I, I wash it uh, quite often. Uh, the hotel had uh, boxes of masks. They're the uh, three ply ones that they were given. Um, all the sheriffs had their own mask, I mean. Did anybody who got this, did they have the N95 branded mask? I'm just kind of curious about that. Really I can't remember. Can't remember. I noticed you are wearing a mask, so is you, you, you believe that you're, you've got the antibodies yourself, so you're mm -hmm. following the rules and the law. Mm -hmm. Are setting an example? Or would that be fair? All the above, yeah, and you know, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people, such as Will Greenley, even though I'm negative, he thinks that he can catch it for me. I want to be respectful of Will Greenley. Uh, I want to wear my mask and show Will that I don't want him to get it. Uh, <laughs> and you know what we know today is this helps. This thing is so fluid. Tomorrow they might decide that this is really not uh, helpful. But right now, uh, the scientists say that this is something that we should be doing. So I want to do it. Has anybody else here at the sheriff's office gotten it after that initial thing at the jail or whatever? Or? Well, I think we just had someone go out yesterday with uh, COVID, I think. Uh, yeah, our, our deputies, we continue to, to have deputies experience COVID. Of course, they can go home and quarantine for 14 days, so we lose them as an employee for 14 days. But uh, we have not had anyone uh, that I'm aware of end up in the hospital with serious symptoms. But definitely some deputies or civilians have had Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Besides the, the initial couple three mm -hmm. at the jail. Yes. Okay. We've definitely had some af afterward. You kind of had a good insight into what the contact tracing process was mm -hmm. like. Do you want to just kind of, I mean, did the health department reach out to you? And, and I mean, do you, you uh, Yes. Like? After uh, my first positive test, the health department called me. Uh, actually, Clint Beaver Sorry. called, yeah, yeah, called me. And uh, said, hey, we just saw that you tested positive. I said, yeah. And he says, I'm going to have someone call you to do the contact tracing. 
which uh, which she did, and um, you know they followed up. So. And you don't know how many people they had to contact based from, right off of you. For me, it was very simple because I left the conference, came home, and I never had contact with anybody. Yeah. So how'd you feel, Daddy? Me too. Yeah. How about anything else? Get that taste what, would, back. what would you say to uh, parents and children too, I guess, as school started? Listen, uh, that's a real delicate situation because I have a daughter who's a teacher and a five-year-old granddaughter who's starting kindergarten. And uh, I just don't feel it's safe right now for school to, uh, to be in person. I, I think maybe if they'd have done virtual school, started off virtually, uh, for a couple of months and see how this virus stabilizes, then bring him back. Uh, but I'm concerned for, for teachers, I'm concerned for students, and I'm concerned for the parents and grandparents who uh, welcome them, those students into their homes after, after a day of school, not knowing if they're bringing this virus home. I saw that. Already quarantined and teachers already quarantined, so yeah.